Hi everyone, I'm Thomas Abraham. I'm a staff software engineer here at Intuit. So I'm part of the data platform team within the organization. So today we will talk about Simplan framework. It is a unified authoring framework for both batch and streaming workloads. Uh, we have structured the talk in two parts. In the first part, uh, Kiran would explain why we would need a unified authoring framework, and then what are the benefits that we get by following that particular concept. Then we will talk in detail about Simplan framework, which is into its implementation of this particular concept. To talk more about the first part, let me get Kiran. Hi, Kiran, please take over. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Kiran Kiramat. I work as a staff software engineer here at Intuit as part of data platform team. We are Intuit, the maker of products like TurboTax, QuickBooks, Mint, Credit Karma, and MailChimp. We serve consumers, small businesses, and the self-employed. Our mission is to power prosperity around the world. And to do so, we are transforming into an AI-driven expert platform. Our data ecosystem is big and complex. We have hundreds of thousands of tables with petabytes of data containing decades of historical information siloed across various systems. Our goal as a data platform team is to make the life of a data worker simple. And in this journey, one challenge we have seen is that there are different ecosystems built for processing batch and streaming. The data worker user interface is different for batch and streaming. The frameworks is also different. The execution engine could also be sometimes different. The reasons to have different ecosystems for processing batch and streaming could be many. One could be historical. Initially, you would have received the data as files and you would have built ecosystem around that. And as the data would have become more real time, the streaming ecosystem would have been built. The reasons for to have different execution framework could also be due to technological choices, wherein you would have made different execution engine choices for batch and streaming needs. Now, the concern of having, the concern the data worker would have uh, with this approach of having different execution engine for batch and streaming is that, do we have to implement different code and config for batch and streaming? Do you have to learn different tools and frameworks? The other challenge, other technological challenge you would have is duplicate effort, high maintenance of having to deal with multiple frameworks, code fragmentation across batch and streaming. There are use case related challenges like, can I backfill streaming data in batch? Can I test data in batch for the streaming data? Can I debug in batch mode for a sample streaming data? Now, our solution to this is a unified processing framework. This is the architecture diagram for a unified processing framework. As you see, it will have one unified self-serve UI powered by a unified processing framework, which would abstract Spark, Presto, Flink, or for that matter, any other execution engine. Your processing logic is implemented once and is applied for both batch and streaming processing needs. Basically, you would be writing the business logic once and the framework would be able to apply the logic under ex different execution engines. As you see here, this is the business logic. So you're implementing it once and is applied across various execution engines. Now, what are the benefits of this approach? A single standard for process, it would bring a single standard for both batch and streaming. The data worker will have one unified experience that would democratize, democratize the data as the data would be more accessible. This will improve the data worker productivity. Thereby, you will have you will be able to innovate faster. You will have higher return on, a, or on your investment. Now, the net impact of all this is that you will be able to derive value out of your data in a much, much faster manner. Now, within Intuit, we have built a unified processing framework called Simplan. And to talk more on the technological stack, my colleague Thomas will, will explain more on that. Thank you, Kiran. So uh, as Kiran mentioned, uh, Simplan is into its implementation of that uh, core unified processing framework for both batch and streaming workload. So at its core, it's a config-driven, low-code, no-code framework. So the business logic that Kiran mentioned in the previous slide, so you can write those business logic as configuration file and pass on to the framework for execution. So these things are represented as operators. Operators are nothing but uh, 
specific functionalities that you can plug into the system. So, and that can be expressed in a configurable manner. And the same operations can be run in both batch and streaming mode. So it depends on how the particular operator receives that particular data. If it receives it in the batch mode, it will run it in batch or it will run it in streaming mode. And it's not just these core operations that the framework does. Along with that, it does so many things under the hood. So it computes matrices. You would be able to figure out what steps is happening. Uh, you will be able to figure out a lot of information will be logged by the framework, and it can be sent to any log aggregation platform like Splunk, OpenSearch, Elasticsearch, for that matter. It does lineage observability. You will be able to know what jobs are running, what tables are produced. Multiple observability matrices are also being logged. And if you look at um, the uh, the tech stack, you are seeing you have Redshift support. You have you can connect to Athena. You would be able to run uh, Presto jobs. You'll be able to run Fling. So there are so many non-Spark um, operators also that you can write. Imagine if you want to connect to a Rust endpoint and probably report a status. Yes, as long as you can express it as an operator within Simplan, you would be able to do that. Now, let's look at how a Simplan configuration works. Uh, looks like, right? So it mainly have two parts to it. One is the execution order, and then you will define how the operators are defined. An operator structure typically would look like this. You will define an operator, which is this, in this particular case, a SQL execution operator, and then you will you can pass the parameters that you want to pass to that particular operator. So in this particular case, you are passing the SQL statement. And like that, you can define as many operators as you want, and you can chain them. And then you will be defining what is the order of execution, like the plan order that you need to define. Now. Let's go to a demo and let's look at how this particular um, demo is structured. So we will be performing three operations in this demo. Uh, we will run, uh, we will do a join operation, a filtration operation, and finally a projection operation. As we mentioned, the same business logic would be run and sent to both batch mode and streaming mode. The only thing that we are changing is how your batch input and streaming inputs are defined. How the inputs and output operations for batch and streaming mode is defined. The business logic would remain the same. Now, let's go and look at our demo. Okay. Now, if you look, uh, let's run this application now. So if you see, we have two files here. We have a personal file and an address file. In the personal file, we have an ID column. And in the address, if you see, the ID column is highlighted. And in the address file, we have the person ID column. So this would be the information that we would be uh, using to join. Now, now, let's go and look at how the input-output operation is defined. So if you, you can see that, we are uh, defining uh, reading that particular file as a JSON batch source and reading it into the personal info. Then we are reading the address information into the working info. And finally, we are uh, writing an operator to write a JSON sync, a batch sync operation, and we are giving the location in which the file has to be returned to. Now, let's go and look at how the business logic is defined. Now, if you look at uh, this, we are performing essentially three operations. We are performing a join operation, a filtration operation, and finally, a projection operation. So let's look at how a uh, join operation is defined. So you are giving the left table, right table, and then you are writing the join condition. This condition is pretty simple for the demo, but it can go arbitrarily as complex as you need. Then, Let's go and define the join operation. In the join, uh, sorry, the filtration operation, here what we are doing is we are saying that only the people who are working on Simplan project has to be filtered out. Then let's go to the projection operation. We are projecting three columns. We are picking up the ID column and converting it to an integer. Then we are picking up first name and last name, concatenating it to a full name. And then finally, we are picking up another column. Now, let's, uh, and finally, we are defining the execution order. Now, let's go and uh, run the application. You can see we are passing the uh, business logic. We are passing the batch IO operation. And along with that, we can also pass an environment variable. Our application won't always run in production, right? We have to run it in E2E, staging, uh, development. So if you have environment-specific variables that you need to pass, you pass it as part of the environment configuration. Now, let's go and run the application. OK, now the application is running. So let's see. Let this guy refresh. 
Okay, let the new file come in. Okay, we have a new file. So if you look at this, exactly how we have defined our projection operation, we are seeing three information that came out. We are having an ID, which is an integer, a full name, which is concatenated, and the location. Now let's switch gears. So instead of running it as a batch operation, let's run it as a streaming operation. If you look at it, the business logic remains the same. So now let's uh, run instead of batch operation, let's switch it to streaming. We are just changing how the inputs and outputs are defined. Now, let's go and look at how the streaming IO is defined. So we are still going to define personal information, working information, and we are going to send that information out. Instead of reading it as a JSON batch source, we are saying we are reading it from a Kafka streaming source. And we are going to subscribe to the personal topic. We are going to subscribe to an address topic. And finally, instead of writing it into a particular uh, location, we are going to send it out to a Kafka topic. So we are saying we have to send it out to this topic. Now, let's uh, go and run this particular application. The application is running. Now, let's, um, okay, so if you see, we have a Kafka producer uh, producing to the personal topic, address topic, and we are ultimately expecting the output to come in the uh, bottom, which is the filter, join, and projector topic. Now, let's pick up uh, data. We will pick up the personal information data and paste it to the personal topic. We'll pick up the address information data and paste it to the address topic. Now, if you see at the bottom, that same output that we saw in batch is coming in streaming. So let's switch to batch. See, exact same output is coming in streaming as well. Okay, now, so this is what uh, we were able to do. Just to recap on what we have, we saw just now, we are able to run past the same business logic, but different um, batch of batch IO operation or streaming IO operation, that particular different configuration file, and we were able to run it for both batch and streaming mode. Now, uh, just to give a context of how Simplan is used within Intuit, we have close to 400 uh, active users using the platform at the moment. And uh, we are running close to 3,500 daily pipelines. And we are affecting close to 10,000 tables on a day-to-day -day basis, which is feeding into close to 1,000 uh, business critical reports. So if you look at these are the different organi organizational groups that we are serving, it is essentially kind of a whole of into it. So to understand how we are scaling uh, to these levels, uh, please look up uh, scaling on Databricks talk that we are presenting in the Databricks summit. You will be able to understand much more about it. And along with that, it is not just um, Spark workloads that we are running on top of Simplan. As we, as I mentioned, uh, as Kiran mentioned in uh, his slide, Simplan is a execution engine agnostic framework. So we have Presto pipelines as well. So to understand how we are running Presto pipelines within Intuit, uh, there is, please look up Presto on Spark session uh, that is also happening as part of the summit. So uh, thank you. That is basically our presentation. And just a high note, we are planning to open source uh, Simplan in sometime in the future. If you are interested in collaborating, please reach out to us. You have our Twitter handles here, or you can reach, reach out to us in LinkedIn. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, hope Thank to you. see you and collaborate more. Thank you.